Welcome to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato with my colleague, uh, Mary Gamba. Mary, we kick off the program with our good friend, Bob Garrett, who is the CEO of Hackensack Meridian Health and a huge Giants fan, HMH. Bob is the official Giants, what? Because the logo is all over the place for every Giant press conference. Yeah, we're, uh, we're the, the hometown hospital for the uh, Giants and uh, one of their, uh, their major uh, partners. And we're hoping for the best this season, Steve. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a true fan in, in good times and bad. So let's, uh, let's hope for a, a good season. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about Eli Manning and Peter Cancro at uh, Jersey Mike's in just a little bit because they're involved very closely with HMH in a big uh, fundraising drive. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mary, real quick, speaking of fundraising, Bob, do you mind if we plug our sponsors and kiss their butts in public? Do you mind if we sure. do that? <laughs> do what you got to do. All good. Thanks. <laughs> do what you got to do, Bob. Mary, real quick on our sponsor. No, no money, no mission, right, Bob? So uh, our sponsors include Veolia, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, New Jersey Sharing Network, uh, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, Seton Hall University and the Bacino Leadership Institute, North Ward Center, Kessler Foundation, and Delta Dental of New Jersey. So thank you to all those wonderful sponsors who make the show possible. That's right. And HMH is one of the most significant sponsor underwriters of our public broadcasting work, particularly around right. health education, medical, clinical issues. Bob, uh, we've talked about leadership communication for a long time. Our company works with HMH and the HMH Physician Leadership Academy. Real quick on this, Bob, before we talk about uh, the Giants and football and other things, the Physician Leadership Academy at HMH is groundbreaking, is nationally, not most, most organizations do not do something like this. Why is that so important, not just to HMH, but to physician leadership moving forward, Bob? Yeah, I, I think the Physician Leadership Academy is a is a really good example of a program that's really needed. You know, if you think about what physicians traditionally learn in medical school, they get um, you know uh, a great dose of uh, of science. They learn about how to treat patients. Today, even uh, and, and in particular at the Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine, they uh, they also uh, there's a focus on prevention and, and keeping communities uh, communities well. But what they what what is usually lacking in terms of uh, core training is communication skills, and uh, that's really really important. Whether um, a physician is on the front lines or in uh, in a leadership position, or maybe they're going to be a future physician leader, it's so important to be able to uh, to communicate with your um, not only your your patients, their families, your audiences, other physicians. And you know we've seen during the pandemic that communication was um, just so vital. Um, you know even in terms of separating uh, fact from fiction, where you know standards right. were changing, information was coming out, misinformation was coming out, whether it be you know on the internet or cable TV. Um, you know physicians became really the trusted source of uh, of information. So I think the Physician Leadership Academy, which really you know uh, is uh, is is grounded in, um, in, in leadership principles, but also focuses in on communication is so vitally important. And again, Bob and the team at HMH, they have allowed us at Stand and Deliver to be a part of that academy. Real quick, and, and Bob, I, I, I need to get this out of the way. Bob and I did not text or email each other to coordinate our ties. That's number one. <laughs> Just It's all giant fans apparently are wearing this today. But also I have to say something else. Bob joined us a while back on St. Patrick's Day, and because Bob's yeah. very aware of themes. Bob, what color tie were you wearing that day? Well, I was wearing green, Steve. Uh, now, the show was taped on St. Patrick's Day, but it wasn't aired on St. Patrick's Day, so I know you had to explain why I was wearing that that green tie with shamrocks and all, but uh, but anyway, we uh, we like to celebrate um, all holidays at Hackensack Meridian Health. Absolutely, and, and Bob mentioned the Hackensack Meridian uh, School of Health, School of Medicine. I just want to be clear on something that uh, Jeff Boskamp, Dr. Jeff Boskamp, the, Boskamp, the interim dean, will be joining us actually in a later taping today on Lessons in Leadership. Mary, jump in with Mr. Garrett. Yeah, I would love to. And Bob, I would love to get your perspective on something. Hackensack Meridian Health, through the Physician Leadership Academy, we have truly learned about the culture at Hackensack Meridian Health, where it's people first, you're taking care of your nurses, you're taking care of your physicians. On a personal note, I felt it, I saw it with Dr. Gua and Dr. Gutierrez in the John Thurer Cancer Center. My mom was treated there. We were treated like family, not like we were a patient. From the top as a leader at Hackensack, how do, how do you lead in such a way that literally every level truly embraces that culture 
of leadership and caring about their patients and their families? Yeah, you know, um, Mary, thank you for that question. And, um, um, you know, I'm happy to hear that uh, your family experience has been uh, been a good one. It is it is important. And, you know, we do look at um, Hackensack Meridian as a um, as a family. Uh, there are certain core values that we uh, stress as part of our, our culture. And, you know, certainly um, compassion and, and caring um, is, is a very, very important piece of uh, what makes up our culture. You know, we're, we strive to, to be innovative. We strive to, to have the best um, clinical protocols available for patients like cancer patients. But, you know, if you don't have the compassion, if you don't have the caring, and, and you know, if you don't have that personal uh, touch, there is something fundamentally missing from that care model. And uh, it's, it's really important to, uh, to myself, to our, our senior team, to our, our, our medical team, to our nurses on the, uh, on the front lines. And I think that came across all, uh, all, during, um, all during COVID. I mean, you know, when I think about the job that our doctors, our nurses, our support team uh, did during COVID, it was, you know, nothing short of extraordinary. And under very difficult times, they never faltered from uh, from those core values, and and that compassion came through, and that that sense of family um, came through as well. You know, I can remember early on in the pandemic when patients couldn't um, communicate with their uh, with their families, and and the nurses became the, the conduits to to put uh, patients in touch with with uh, with their families as they might be you know, speaking their last words, um, and and they became a family member themselves, and you know, they they embraced. Patience and uh, you know it was, it was it, tear jerking moments for sure, uh, but you know I think it gave the families and I think those patients in their last uh, minutes uh, some some real comfort to know that they had a family at Hackensack Meridian Health that cared for them like like their own families. Bob, let me follow up on this uh, and check out the HMH Hackensack Meridian Health website. We'll put it up in post production. Also, talk about innovation and leadership. The CDI, the Center for Discovery and Innovation and the team there, uh, Bob recognized them at the HMH gala that I, that I was honored to be at. Um, and he also talked about them at the HMH annual meeting uh, that was held not too long ago. And there's a clear connection between innovation and leadership, but I wanna talk more about you and your evolving and your innovating as a leader. Question, Bob, you've been in healthcare for a few years, right? Yeah, a few. Do do I need to tell you? No, how many? no, it's, no, it's no. I will. All it's all good. It's uh, it's it's nearly forty years, Steve. So um, you know, I started when I was five. Bob and I have an agreement. We disclose in just the way he just did. I started broadcasting <laughs> at PBS at three. So um, right. in that spirit, Bob, how about this? What struck what strikes me about you is a not only how you have evolved as a leader and as a public communicator, and I've seen it over the years, but also you never stop innovating. You never stop looking for, people call it deals. It's no, it's mergers. It's um, innovating and collaborating and partnering. And where does that come from for you? Do you in the middle of the night, wake up and turn to Laura and go, hey, I have an idea. <laughs> Laura's Bob's wife. I'm sorry. I just need to, <laughs> do, do you, you know, do I, that? Sometimes I do wake up in the middle of the night and, and turn to Laura with, uh, with ideas. Um, but let me, you, you know, let me actually, let me talk about that first, because, sure. uh, you know, you, you alluded to it actually earlier, you know, we, I, I had, I introduced what we called the, uh, the dream team for our new fundraising uh, campaign. Yeah. And that's uh, Eli Manning, of course, the, the former New York Giants quarterback and two-time MV, uh, MVP and great philanthropist raised uh, over $20 million on behalf of Tackle Kids Cancer for Pediatric Cancer Research. And he teamed up, uh, we announced he teamed up with uh, with Peter Cancro, who's the founder and CEO of Jersey Mike's. Again, a huge philanthropist giving back to many causes. That that dream team idea actually came from a dream uh, that I had and woke up at three in the morning and uh, and kind of nudged my wife and said, I, I think I think I have uh, who, who should lead the, um, the, the campaign going forward for fundraising. I said Eli Manning and Peter Cancro, and my 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 wife was half asleep, so she kind of kind of rolled back over. But um, but but I actually wrote it down in the middle of the night uh, because I knew it was an innovative um, thought. I didn't know if it was going to come to fruition, and thankfully both of them accepted uh, very uh, very enthusiastically. And and the rest is history. We announced it a couple of weeks ago. But getting back to your question on innovation, I think it's really um, important that organizations and leaders continue to innovate. I, I've studied organizations, not just in healthcare, but in, um, in, in industry, 
in government, it, and, and the most successful organizations are those that continue to innovate. You, you can't sit back and, and, and just accept the status quo and that that's going to get you uh, into a successful future. You need to continually innovate. And that's why right in our vision statement, we put innovation is in our DNA. We want to remind ourselves every day that we need to think out of the box. We need to innovate. We need to encourage our frontline team members to come up with uh, new ideas. And, and also, I, I truly believe the future of healthcare and actually the future of many industries is about partnership. Uh, so they're, you're right. They're not deals. They are, they are partnerships that will help us to deliver on our mission. Our mission is to transform healthcare. We can't necessarily do that by ourselves all the time. Great example of that is when we merged with the uh, carrier clinic to uh, really um, take a leadership role in behavioral health. Behavioral health. We, behavioral health. Yeah, we weren't. We weren't, you know, at Hackensack Meridian, like most health systems, we, that wasn't necessarily our sweet spot, our, our, our um, center of excellence. But we knew by partnering with an organization like the Carrier Clinic that who was, who it was and is the largest um, provider of behavioral health services in New Jersey, we knew we could do it better. We knew we could provide better access to care. We knew we could innovate uh, with their help. And, and we've, we've done just that in, in a short period of time. You know, real quick, uh, as we wrap up this segment, um, Mary talked a little bit before about uh, her mom uh, and the treatment that she got at the John Thurow Cancer Center and the family during a very difficult time for, for Mary's family. But Bob knows, and I'm not going to go into any detail, but when we talk about behavioral health, there is no family that uh, hasn't experienced this. And I know that when our family faced a real crisis, and I actually called Bob directly, it was through the clinicians in the field of mental health and behavioral health who were right there for us. So I just want to share that, Bob. Mary, last question. Hey, Bob, before, Mary's got a last question, but she's like, what are you doing with these props? How about, okay. Bob, all day long, he, he, he keeps pulling out, like, let's make a deal. He's pulling out a, a hairpin. He's pulling out. <laughs> no, no. You got this? Ready, Bob, for this quote? Bob talked about innovation, creativity, but check this out, Mary. The great Vince Lombardi who was, I think, an assistant coach with the Giants back in the day. He was. Played at Fordham, where our son actually goes to school. This is uh, Vince Lombardi, one of the greatest leaders ever in the NFL. The difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength. It is not a lack of knowledge, but rather in a lack of will. Bob Garrett, real quick on that, a lack of will and grit, you say? I say uh, Vince Lombardi uh, was uh, was certainly uh, right on, spot on with that. Uh, you you really need to have that that grit. You need to have that uh, will. I mean that that's what makes um, you know innovation come to life because um, you have to be as a leader, uh, whether you're a CEO or another leader in an organization, you got to be the cheerleader. You got to be out there. You got to be um, stressing the mission and, and making sure people are practicing that mission, practicing that innovation, coming up with new ideas, not afraid to fail either. I mean, you know, great companies, you know, right. for every, you know, one great idea, there's, there's six or seven that may not work. Uh, and people, people need to be rewarded for that, not, not punished for that. So I do give uh, the great Vince Lombardi credit because I think that's spot on. See, Vince has been gone for years. Lombardi's been gone, but we still talk. Mary, last question for Bob. He's actually got to go run a system. Go ahead. I know he does. 30 seconds or less, Bob. What is the greatest leadership lesson that you learned over the last two and a half years uh, through COVID and the pandemic? You know, I think, uh, Mary, there were, uh, there were several. You know, one we just talked about, and that is uh, that you need to continually innovate even in a crisis, you know, whether that means, uh, you know, uh, new behavioral health um, uh, centers that we have to, we have to, put together a new hospital at home, whatever, whatever the innovation is, you still need to innovate. You need to also be um, nimble, but you also need to be agile and you need to make quicker decisions. That's one thing we learned from the pandemic and we've now incorporated that faster decision-making into our operating model. We had to think on the fly. We had to make decisions about where patients go, where staff goes, uh, how to source PPE, all of those quick decisions. I think it was a great lesson there learned. And then the last thing I would say is communication. Um, we learned that it is, you can't communicate enough. And uh, we have really upped our game, whether it's internal communication to our team members or our physicians or external communication to the community. There's never, um, there, there's never enough communication and, and you need to do it often. You need to do it well. And you need to have diverse forums to uh, communicate um, uh, to your, your various audiences. 
That is Bob Garrett, CEO of Hackensack Meridian Health. Bob, let's do this. The next time you join us, whether it's on the public television side or this side, we will text each other the night before, coordinate our attire. I better be on that text, Steve. I don't want to be left out if we do it for lessons. You know, this, I don't want to open this up, but there's a great Honeymooners episode, which it dates me. You know where I'm going, Bob? Do you remember that that Trixie and Alex? Um, Trixie and... Uh, um, Alice. 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 I, 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 <laughs> to the moon. They, they wore the same dress, Bob and I. It, it, it's different. But they wouldn't go to an event because they were wearing the same dress. Bob, we will coordinate next time. Bob came off for serious business, but I think he forgets that lessons in leadership are a little looser. Thank you, Bob. All the best to you and the family at HMH. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mary. It was, uh, it was great. Uh, all the best to you guys. Yeah, I hope Bob doesn't regret that he came on. <laughs> Not at all. You got it. We'll be right back right after this. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. I could feel my lungs fill with oxygen and I got my life back. The Sharing Network means to me hope, life, and everything. The Sharing Network was a lifeline to me when I really needed it. We are an organ procurement organization. The core purpose of the New Jersey Sharing Network is to save and enhance lives. To honor those who gave. A tribute to those who received. Offer hope to those who continue to wait. And remember the lives lost while waiting. For the gift of life. Lessons in Leadership is uh, proud to be joined by Jerry Itell, who is Partner Emeritus and Chief Metaverse Officer at Prager Metis CPA is one of our longtime partners. Jerry, good to see you. Uh, same here, Steve. It's great to see you. Hi, Are you out on the island right now as we speak? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm in uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Neck in the uh, Huntington area. Long Island. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was out, Steve, quick side story. I went out to Long Island once. My younger son had to do a referee seminar there and the whole way he wanted to kill me. I kept saying, now I know why they call it Long Island. It takes a long time to get anywhere you're going on Long Island. Yeah, but yes. when you get there, all good things happen, Jerry. It was gorgeous. It, I loved it. It was amazing. Hey, Jerry, real quick, uh, the term metaverse, not familiar to everyone. You're the chief metaverse officer at Prager Metis. Describe that. Well, I kind of when I when I kind of went into my semi-retirement, um, Glenn Friedman, managing partner, CEO, was um, we were very interested in um, extending the brand into the virtual world. You know, we had some contacts, and uh, it was just a good fit for me. You know, I was at a creative bent, and uh, kind of I uh, try to think young, so uh, it was just a natural fit for me to uh, get involved in that. So I got involved, and I have a little crypto background. And, you know, so. And by the way, Jerry mentions Glenn uh, Friedman and uh, Lori Roth, the leaders at Prager Metis. Check out our website, previous interviews we've done with them. Jerry, let me ask you, uh, and also, as you have stepped down, stepped down from your role as uh, the um, managing partner, if you will, over in Long Island, Mary Mooney, who I've worked with and coached over the years in her, terms of leadership, is playing in that role right now. But the thing that strikes me about this is that you've been a mentor and a coach to people like Mary and many others. How important for you as a leader is mentoring and coaching others? Talk about that, Jerry. I think it's, um, it wasn't always important, but when I started managing the Long Island office and you know, Mary and I go back a long way and you know, because you're a part of it, um, just uh, the relationship with her really, the way it developed, it was, I was sort of a mentor, but at the same time, I learned a lot from her, you know, because we're so different. I'm more mellow and she's more, you know, <laughs> she's more intense. Her leadership style. Was, I'm, Jerry, I'm going with passionate. She's more passionate. I, I, I agree with that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, a little tougher than me. There's so many different ways to, to um, skin a cat, you know, and much more detail oriented. So, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, um, I wouldn't notice certain things and she would notice whatever, whatever it is, it worked out in the long run. I picked up the best from her and she picked up the best from me. That's, that's the way I like to look at it. It sounds you a know? lot like my relationship with Mary Gamba. Mary, jump in. I was just going to say, it sound, you are, Jerry, you are talking my language, number one. I often say to Steve, listen, you know, when things go wrong, there is more than one way to react to a situation when it goes wrong. And, uh, and he has also coached me, listen, you know, you do need to be a little bit more stern. You do need to be more specific in your feedback. So it's the yin and the yang. It's a two-way street of leadership. Mm -hmm. And I would love to go back to the metaverse thing a little bit. I did do some research because prior to you and I talking uh, recently, I had never even heard of this, uh, this role. And I wanted to get a sense, how challenging is it to build relationships in the metaverse? Because we're talking digital, we're talking social media, we're talking Bitcoin and all these other newfangled things that, that just don't make sense to me. Talk about building relationships in that world. Well, it, it, that's actually not been too difficult because, um, you know, I've met a lot of um, people that are you know, developing, they're successful, they've been successful in other businesses, and then they've gone into ventures, and they're build, trying to build communities. So, um, and they're very open, very, um, very smart. Sometimes they're, they've been very successful, and now they're, you know, putting some funds into it into um, metaverse type situations, building communities for, um, you know, female empowerment or whatever it is. I mean, you know, we've, we've worked with, a, you know, through an affiliate, uh, female quotients and just, you know, other or, or people or brands, you know, larger brands trying to get in. So it's been very, very easy building relationships. Um, now, of course, some of the, you know, then you, you're dealing with some people that are a little flaky too, but um, I'm a little flaky too sometimes. So, you know, we join, the, join, yes. the flaky, <laughs> join the flaky club. So, but, you know, there are a little, you know, you do have to run in, you do run into that situation too, where um, you kind of do have to um, eventually draw the line with some people. Jerry, let me try this. In working with Glenn and Lori and, and knowing Mary uh, out on Long Island, Mary Mooney, who's running that, your operation out there after being your colleague for a long time in that with you in that role here's what i'm curious about mary and i talk about business development a lot you know we try not to call it sales we call it business development relationship building in your view what is the connection between leadership and great business development boy that is a that is a really good question and I, you know, I think, I think it comes down to caring, and I'll tell you why. Because you get if you're leading somebody. Uh, actually, let's go back forty years. When I'm running to clients, this is when I'm visiting clients. People don't do this anymore. They do it to a much lesser extent. You run into a lot of little businesses. This I'm going way back, and everybody's running their little business, and people either fear that leader or that owner or they respect them. And I think for many different reasons, but generally it's because they care so much about their business. So if you care about your clients, you care about the lawyers that recommend business and you do a good job and that, and that reflects on the people you're leading to do a good job, it, it's all, it's circular. So somebody that's gonna recommend business knows you're gonna do a good job. The people that you're, asking to do a good job, know you care, and there's going to be the repercussions, or you're just going to be upset, you know, depending on your leadership style, you know, you think you're going to go crazy, or you're going to just give them a look, or you're going to just get somebody else to do the no job. I hope that makes uh, the next job, I hope that makes some sense. It's about caring for what you do. And of course, there's personality involved as well. Yeah. Mary, real quick on this. I, I think I've said to you before, I, I actually can I don't want to say complain, but I expressed in an email that I wanted something changed in the formatting of lessons in leadership. There was a gra there was a graphic that I didn't think Mary and I looked particularly good in. So I said to Sylvester, who is our uh, editor and does a great job, I said, Sylvester, can we find a different picture, you know, of Mary and I for the pro promo, blah, blah, blah. And then here's the point of it. See, Jerry, you called yourself a detail-oriented person. We connected to business development. We connected to leadership. I said to Mary, when I stop caring, and again, it's not about me, it's about a larger question of caring. When I stop caring about those details, when we stop caring about serving our clients at every level we can, that's when you tap out and get out of the business. 
Mary, jump in there and I'll let, we'll let Jerry go. Yeah, definitely. And I was just going to say that it is all about caring. I, I literally started, I was, I think, five years old when I didn't even know what it meant to be a leader, but I definitely cared about others, about animals, about friends, family. And talk about Prager Metis. One thing that we found by working with Glenn and with Lori and now with you, Jerry, is it truly is a family, right? At Prager Metis, talk about that culture and really how you're all there to support one another. Oh, definitely a family. I mean, I remember, you know, I, I go back so far with with Glenn and with Lori. I mean, we're family. I mean, and I think it does extend. I go back with Ed Benedetto. I mean, there's a group of us that go all the way back. And um, so we see the way, you know, we're from the, 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 the if it's a triangle, it's six, or a pyramid, reverse pyramid, you know, I think it extends to we're like, you know, we're like the parents, mm -hmm. multiple parents um, of this community. And I, I think I think it's because we all started when we were smaller, you know, we we're yep. not that many people and that's what's given it the family. And that's what I think is the answer to that question. Hey, so, Jerry, can I thank you enough and to the team at Prager Metis, to, to Lori, to Glenn, and to everyone who's been a partner of ours. We run a leadership academy at Prager Metis, uh, it's leadership, it's communication, it's business development, it's a whole range of things. Uh, best to you and uh, the team at Prager Metis. Jerry is in fact the chief metaverse officer, always learning, lifelong learner, never stops. Jerry, thanks so much for joining us, we appreciate it. Thanks Steve, thank you, Mayor. You got it, stay with us, I think we've got another minute right after this. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Welcome back. I've got about a minute and a half left. Mary, Jerry Attell was, is only one of several guests who talked about their organization as a family. You and I have talked about this. It's, it's kind of tricky because you, you want to treat people like a family, like their family, and you want to be there for them and be, you care about them, their family, their children, their spouses, their issues. But, but there is a, isn't there some line somewhere between family and work? There is. And I think when, we, when I say that, I like to say that our office and our team is like a family, it means that you truly care about one another, right? You care about what they're doing outside of the office place. But of course, as people leave or if they transition to other jobs, it doesn't mean that they're going to come back and you're going to be having a 4th of July you know, barbecue with them. But it does just mean that you genuinely care. I've worked at other organizations that were very, very large, and I can't say that there was that same family feel because it was such a large organization. So I think at Prager Medicine here, we're very fortunate that we are a smaller group. So it is more of a friend and family atmosphere, in my opinion. In, the, in 30 seconds, I see it, Elvin, um, but I just want to say this. I agree that we need to treat people a certain way, like family, like you care about them, you care about their issues and their problems and you need to be there for each other. But I have seen leaders and I won't get on a soapbox who are so caught up in we're family that they don't have the tough conversations. They don't want to hurt someone because it's a performance issue. I know I got to get out, Elvin, part of my family, I understand. He's apparently the godfather of the whole operation. But that being said, don't let that family personal thing get in the way of doing what you need to do to run the operation. Lessons in leadership, Steve, Mary, we are, we're married at work. Are we not married? We are, yes. You're my work husband. And we're family. We'll see you next time. <laughs> this edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.